the best table. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, bring it on. <laughs> well, I have jelly baby babies. You got so. jelly babies. <laughs> right? You're, you're the <laughs> Look at that. Thank, Thank you. you. Here you go. Here. No. Oh, these are actual jelly beans. They are proper jelly beans. What are they? Jelly beans. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a gummy bear, right? Yeah. Yeah. But they're a little different. Yeah. Little different. Yeah. Now, now, Tom Baker, who played the fourth, yeah. uh, this was one of his sort of character quirks. Yes. He would eat jelly beans. That's right. Movie <laughs> in. Besides this guy. Yeah. Shave. Movie in. Sorry. My entrance to it was Eccleston, so. so. So time travel. Yes. Yes. While we're a lot of it going on. <laughs> while we're on the <laughs> subject. <great> segue. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was. It was kind of upsetting to see you die in Gotham, but I'm glad that you're still on board. <laughs> <laughs> you never saw the body. That's true. I was thinking. I was thinking that's a possibility. Look, I, look, in those kind of shows, you're as dead as they need you to be. <laughs> that's right. So who <laughs> knows? They may go plot hole, fill it, uh, resurrect Siona. So that means you're gonna come back in season five of Gotham. <laughs> I, you know what? From your mouth to God's mouth. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> I've died so many times on shows. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. But you know, again, but it was a, it, it was such a, a hoot. That was that was a uh, that was a that was a bucket list thing right there because I got to be in Arkham Asylum, I got to be in Gotham City, so that was a thrill. Yeah. I'm to the Black Mask, of course. So. I think it's a precursor. Yeah, he certainly is. He certainly is. So what part of a bucket list? I have no idea what you're guys talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 we're all nerds here. So what part of a bucket list is this? You know, take off for you. Well, for me, I, I'm a huge. I'm a huge genre fan, and you know, I grew up wanting to be Han Solo. So, so the chance to like run around in a futuristic environment with uh, with with cool people, and, and and so like the eight-year-old in me is like living out a fantasy. Uh, and then, as a fanboy, it's a show that I would watch. You know, I would I would watch Twelve Monkeys even if I was not. And he's kind of a little bit of an anti-hero, too. He is. Yeah, he's kind. Yeah, yeah he is. And he certainly, he certainly has, uh, certainly has a mean streak in him. Uh, but I think he does do it for good reasons. I think he is honestly trying to protect people, and he's honestly trying, and he's, you know, running from his own demons, which you'll discover more of in season two. Um, I don't. I, I think he's, as I've said before, if there if there hadn't been an apocalypse, he would have owned a bar. Like, he likes being around people, he likes having a laugh, and he likes having a drink, it's just, you know, the, the plague woke up the sociopath. Yeah. Right, Barbara? It's like... <laughs> All bad guys always, you know, they, we as actors have to be the, you know, you become an actor because you want to be loved. I mean, what other reasons would you do this crazy job? So, you know, if you play a bad person, you still try to sneak out. Yeah, but they love the bad guys. <laughs> we get the best lines and the best costumes. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and people can still end up rooting for you. That's the great thing about it. Yeah. You can show so many facets of your character. Absolutely. And, 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 and especially in season two, they certainly uh, have repurposed uh, or, re, uh, or deepened and examined his initial antagonism. The circumstances changed, so I think suddenly what he thought was just a post-apocalyptic environment is one that has 12 monkeys and time travel and what? So uh, he's got he's to choose some different alliances. What are you most excited for for fans to see about your characters heading into this season? I think um, if they're interested in Jones, it would be, in would be interesting for them to see how she's kind of falling apart. Mm -hmm. And she goes even lower than from the last season. And uh, what she does, or what is done to her, to you know, to come to come back, and what her mind facilitates for her to bring her out of the ditch. So she is. Uh, she has to take some some knocks. She is not flying as the leader up there anymore. She has been humbled and it goes even deeper. And usually, you know, people, if they go through a really dark time, they often become more compassionate and to other people, and they have more insight, you know, and things. So it makes her just more complex. Don't you have, aren't you playing an alternate version of this season? 
Uh, no, in, 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 yeah, in the other in the other uh, season there was actually the autumn version. Oh, that's version. right. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 You can never tell with this show. Yeah, you can never tell. It's, 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 it's a fascinating thing, yeah. You really don't know what's going to happen next. But, but this year, I mean, the, the characters just interact much more. So they, they have kind of established their own rules, what this is about, what you can, you know, what what is what could be possible. I think they've opened up people in the last season to accept that almost everything is possible. And so this year the characters can really go into more psychological things, to look more at each other, to experience each other. No, they bring out the, 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 the fact that they're colliding characters that didn't collide last season will just, by definition, bring out different sides of people. And I think the collision of Deacon and Rayleigh will bring out a side of Deacon that we had not seen before. As I you know, was saying earlier, Deacon remembers Rayleigh. She was on every TV when he was a boy, you know? So, and she was this guiding sense of reason. And so I think he has an opinion about her and, and, and she brings out a side of him that doesn't come out in other people, that other people don't bring out of him. And he's got a different relationship with Jones than he has with anybody else uh, on the show. And I think that's what's interesting about season two is is, is how they're mixing and matching people and seeing how uh, the ensemble, the, the chemistry and ensemble changes who these people are. One thing that I only realized like a couple of days ago that this show really has incredibly strong women. There is no victim kind of When I meet Cole in the end of season one as a child, so I always knew that. But I as an actress didn't know that. So that is like interesting, you know, if you do a TV series, somebody's writing for you. Well, it also so, changes your memories, too. Yeah. You know? All of a sudden, wow, I knew him the whole yeah. time. Uh, that's so cool. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good, good. Thank you. Yeah, we're all excited.